Hello, I'm Miss Barbara, a teacher at the Big Apple School. Today, we will be practicing your English by reading along. This is a creative nonfiction piece written by me. Ready? Donnie Dots or True Confessions, a creative nonfiction by Barbara Fortier. For two years, I lived in a duplex with my mother and two sisters on Marianne Drive in Santa Clara, California. We moved there during my very last month of first grade when I was six years old. Next door in the attached unit lived a family of three. Oddly, they all had similar names. The dad was named Don Dots, the mom was named Donna Dots, and the little boy was named Donny Dots. Even though Donny Dots was about two years younger than me, we still became friends of sorts. Don and Dots would not allow Donny Dots to venture farther than our shared yard, so we would pal, pal around outside within this prescribed boundary or play together inside. Unfortunately, Donny Dots brought out the worst in me. Four incredibly unattractive personality traits. The first trait was being critical. I was critical of Donny Dots. He would often come over to watch afternoon cartoons on the TV. This was back in the 1960s, when we all had those old-style television sets. You know the kind. Big, heavy, bulky CRT TVs. Pictures in black and white. I was not critical of Donny Dots watching cartoons on the TV, per se, but rather the way he ate cereal while watching cartoons on the TV. He would sit cross-legged on the floor, hunching over a bowl of Fruit Loops or Sugar Pops in his lap, with head raised up TV-word, eyes glued to the screen, and he would slurp. He made long slurping sounds that can only be produced by a little boy entranced in the delightful wonderment of cartoon watching while inattentively funneling milk directly from cereal bowl to lips after having long finished the bits and pieces of Fruit Loops or Sugar Pops floating in a swimming pool of milk. I would never say anything to him, only glare from my side vantage point and study him. I found myself repulsed by these slurping noises, yet I felt sorry for him. The fact that he was unaware of my observing him made him, to me, appear vulnerable and that vulnerability made me feel uncomfortable about being so critical of him. The second trait was manipulation. I was manipulative. I used pseudo-logic on Donny Dots. One time, he had found a dime, and I wanted that dime. So I presented to him the concept that not having a dime would be more beneficial to him than having a dime. I would be, in a sense, unburdening him from this wretched dime. Therefore, he should hand over said dime to me immediately. He yielded to my demand, and I felt victorious. The third trait was jealousy. The Dots family had bought a brand new Chevy station wagon with wooden side paneling. That made me feel jealous. So one evening, I stole out of the duplex with my house key and ran the key all along the driver's side, leaving a long, thin scratch on the Dots' brand new Chevy station wagon with wooden side paneling. To my knowledge, I conceived this idea all by myself. No one had taught me this skill. Years later, I learned this, that this retaliatory act was called keying a car. I rec recognized myself and felt ashamed. Back then, when I was seven, I'd felt no remorse. The fourth trait was craftiness. For some reason, I always wanted Donnie Dots to get into trouble with his mom. So one morning, I saw Donna Dots hanging freshly washed laundry up on the clothesline outside in our shared yard. I spotted a pair of Donnie Dots underpants hanging there to dry, and then I watched his mom disappear back inside through her back door. I carefully figured out that if Donnie Dots were to poop in his underpants, he would surely get into trouble. So I hatched a brilliant plan. 
I scooped up some mud into my little fist and crafted what I thought was an authentically shaped piece of poop. Next, quite gingerly, I balanced upon a lounge chair that I had pulled up under the clothesline. It was strategically placed directly under Donnie Dot's underpants. Barefooted and teetering, I conscientiously reached up and delicately placed the lump of mud into the crotch of Donnie Dot's underpants. Then I swiftly ran inside and peeked out the window, anticipating Donna Dot's coming out, discovering that her son had pooped in his underpants that she had just laboriously washed, and Donnie Dot's would receive some type of very deserving punishment. But to my dismay, that is not what happened. Donna Dots came out, saw the poop, ripped the soiled underpants right out from underneath its clothespins, and shot an angry scowl toward our back door. I was truly perplexed. She had clearly seen the poop. Why did not Donny Dots get into trouble? A couple of decades later, while reflecting upon this incident, I did figure the whole thing out. Yes, I had been a very naughty little girl while living in that duplex with my mother and sister on Marianne Drive in Santa Clara, California. But I blame it all on Donnie Dots. 